Hey guys, this is the prelims focus news discussion of 9th of October. Let's see the very first news guys. First news is about International Conference on Dialogue of Civilizations and this is the very fourth conference which is being organized in India. Earlier conferences, the first very conference held in Guatemala in 2013, second held in Turkey in 2015. 14 and uh, third in China in 2015 and this fourth is in 2017 that will be held in India and the main uh, aim of this conference is to encourage the scholarly and the public discourse which was up till now not been seen in these areas of you know civilizational perspective right so I mean they will there will be public discourse in five ancient and literature civilization of the world that is Egypt Mesopotamia South Asia that is this Harappan culture and all next is China and fifth is Mesoamerica <coughs> excuse me and uh, how the study of the past can share our present and you know make our future so those kind of discourse will also be you know discussed in this uh, conference and uh, there will be a series of dialogue related to it which was earlier being initiated by national geographical society in 2011 and uh, yeah this was about this uh, conference next is news was about a territorial army let's first we'll see the context then we'll discuss about what territorial army is right so the context is territorial army the symphony band performs uh, to motivate the citizen of the country and they inculcate the spirit of national integration on, among all the citizens of the country and for this they have you know organized a symphony band performance see this is a kind of band performance band means music performance right and it is said that it is excellent music of band and added to the patriotic fervor all right and let's discuss about the territorial army what they are guys so they are basically the second line of defense after the regular indian army means the regular uh, army thing is done by the Indian army because they get actual training but these people don't get that short of training which are being you know obtained by this regular Indian army people and uh, this is also not a profession or a occupation or any source of employment but this is only meant for those people who are already in ministry of civil professions because you have to include it yourself in civil profession and that will be acting as a prerequisite to join the territorial army all right and the role let's see the role of territorial army guys so they <coughs> relieve the regular army from the static duties means the kind of duties which are being deployed at present situation in india is like very dynamic right means uh, say for example uh, now there is terrorist attack in somewhere else all right now there is uh, next time there will be some different issues so those kind of issues are being dealt by the army Hana? so that's why uh, some at some point of time there is a need of territorial army right so these people who are in earlier civil uh, ministry of civil pro uh, profession and they are included themselves in territorial army so they might assist those static duties which were earlier being done by regular army right say for example if you can take then uh, uh, like voting all right so if there comes a situation where is there is a need of you know forces uh, to, uh, ma to maneuver the situation of you know uh, vote ballot or you know if somewhere there is election going on so such kind of situation since those are <laughs> static duties so those are being done performed by territorial armies and they also assist the civil ad administration in dealing with natural cam calamities and essential other services which are when so ever those are required next is state to act up on using printed paper to pack food see guys uh, like in 2000 there has been a conference being inaugurated by fssai so in that conference fssai has said that you know the usage of these printed papers to give food to the street people these things must be uh, you know banned because these inks used in the papers are of very cheap quality and they are toxic in nature right so after hearing that decision of that uh, fssai this time Karnataka government has said that okay we will also ban the use of newspaper for serving the foods in streets right and instead we will promote banana leaves or other viable healthier or environmental friendly alternative and those are like uh, some uh, leaves uh, paper uh, leaf plates are used so those things will also be promoted and since see this is a two way benefit is there if uh, these uh, printed papers are banned then that is good for the health of general people right first 
and second if these banana leaves or other you know leafy uh, plates are being used then that will be giving employment to those who are associated with these kind of horticulture activities all right so that's why i mean this is a very good step by the karnatak government and this must also be incorporated in other states of our india also right and uh, they have said that this is basically a plan to start awareness campaign first because uh, this is a very daunting challenge in front of the karnatak government that how to implement this uh, law to the grassroots level see because street vendors are very poor right and if you will just charge fine from them that the, this is of no use guys because they don't they earn hardly 500 rupees a day and if you are charging you know 200 or 300 as a fine then this is not a viable at all i mean see th those people are poor so you know the first thing that the karnataka government is taking that they will create awareness initiative first and and in that awareness initiative they will tell about the you know uh, the the uh, demerits of using these uh, you know papers which are having toxic things in it toxic chemicals and toxic inks in it right so that's why this was a uh, news next is about artificial intelligence guys actually a reporter came in which it has said that there will be creation of around 2.3 million jobs globally and uh, that will become a positive for net job motivator by 23rd 2020 basically and uh, in this report it has been said that there are some st industries which are going to have job loss there are some industries which are going to have job gain and there are other industries which will never be having job lobs in future at all because uh, those cannot be operated by artificial intelligence right for them uh, the human man force is very much required and those sectors are healthcare and education all right guys so just see these two sectors so if you at all want to pursue your future life or future you know employment in sector any sector and if you are afraid that your uh, job can be snatched by the artificial intelligence robots or you know some sort of uh, these equipments then you can opt for these two sectors that is healthcare and education those are the best sectors where the jobs cannot be taken away by this artificial intelligence right so in the article it was being mentioned that uh, in future many in uh, internet uh, operated things and uh, means internet of things capable project uh, project products will be implemented in the, in the market it will come in market so that people will purchase it and people will do business through it so this is kind of sector where you know businesses uh, there are prospects where business can be increased and many more kind of business can be uh, come up right so that's why this was in uh, news and uh, this you can incorporate in your main answer as well as uh, your uh, essay writing as a case study thing right next is about air pollution can harm children a study has been published in journal of environmental pollution in, in which it was being said that since uh, children are going to school so in that uh, duration when they are going from their home to school they are in a prone to you know uh, these inhaled by this fine particulate matter that is pm 2.5 which is ultimately being emitted by either uh, you know automobiles or you know any kind of construction activities that is going on nearby the uh, main road region right so they are uh, children's are most vulnerable uh, sectors because first of all they are having small lung capacity all right and in that small lung capacity the proportionate wise of black carbon which they are inhaling from the atmosphere is respectively more and that's why it is being said that if they do it more than in future it is might it might be probable that they there is reduction in their working memory right so you know government must take uh, measures to you know uh, cope up uh, with this problem all right and uh, it is also being said that 20 percent of child's daily dose of black carbon is inhaled during urban commutes means mainly this happens in urban areas because the population level in urban areas is huge and toxil, uh, toxicological and e experimental studies have shown that these short exposures to have very high concentration on pollutants can have disproportionately high impact on the health of course that we have discussed and also one point has been discussed that it is not that those children who are going who are taking pathway they are only vulnerable to these kind of pollution 
other children who are you know using car their personal car or public transport are also vulnerable because this is the particulate material which are you know uh, being uh, floating in atmosphere right so it's not that you know it will float in certain areas also it might move to other areas in fact might in in enter your school premises also right so that's why i mean you just have to think from all the different angles that what i mean where these children are very uh, vulnerable from the air pollution which which sectors are there this vulnerability sector is more right next is uh, next news is about remove m from amu and h from bhu that is aligarh muslim universities uh, a ugc panel has been set up by the ministry of human resource and development first of all and that panel has recommended that you know you have to remove this muslim word and this hindu word from aligarh muslim university and banaras hindu university respectively they have given few reasons because these are central funded university first of all next is our constitution is secular so every institution must be secular right since this is a written muslim university or hindu university so there is a feelings that you know these on uh, institutions are meant for muslims only these institutions are meant for hindus only right so it has in future it has probability to increase communal classes all right so that's why this has uh, this uh, panel has recommended this and also said that uh, you know there are possibility that politics must also grow in these type of university of course your politics is not good for you know any university because people are more distracted towards politics than towards study because see these are since central funded university means these are being funded by the fund of taxpayers means people like us who are paying tax to the government right and of course we will not expect these things to happen i mean we will not expect that you know the money could be uh, used in unproductive work and unproductive work of, of course i'm pointing here towards you know political things right so that's why this uh, panel has recommended this and you just have to remember this this was a news also all right guys so yeah up till this the news is over we'll meet in next class till then bye bye take care and thank you for listening to me guys thank you very much